All right, well, I'm going to get going. And I know that people are going to be joining as we progress. So hi, my name's Matt. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Matt. I'm the worship pastor at Family Church in Portsmouth. And I'm doing these worship leader conversations each week, chatting to worship leaders from all over the country, different kinds of styles and traditions. Uh, none of that matters. It's just we're, we're, I want to chat with people and find out about their journey as worship leaders, how they lead a team, how they've grown, the, the challenges that they've faced, the successes that they've had. And through those conversations, we want to give opportunity for people to learn from each other. I think that's one of the, the great ways of growing as a leader, particularly as a leader, is by watching what other people do, listening to their story, and learning from them. I think we've got so much that we can learn from each other. And, and the, the great thing is that there isn't a single person out there that we can't learn from. And there isn't a single person out there who can't, can't learn something new from someone else, even if they've never met them before. And I think that's the beautiful thing about these kind of conversations is that everyone has the opportunity to learn something new. So I'm gonna be joined very shortly by Hannah Blythe, who is the worship team leader at St Albans in Fulham, which is in West London. And uh, I haven't met Hannah uh, face to face, uh, only online. Uh, I know her through her vicar, who, uh, Matt Hogg, who is uh, uh, he's, he's doing loads of stuff on social media. And that's how I found, uh, found out about him, is through the, the things that he was doing on social media, having conversations with other church leaders and stuff like that. He's doing some great stuff. So just a quick shout out to Matt Hogg, who, because of him, I'm, I'm, uh, I was inspired to do these kinds of things. So a quick shout out to Matt Hogg. I know he's in the middle of a live right now talking to, to, to leaders, so he won't be joining us tonight but I'm hoping you will catch up and see this. Um, but uh, first of all, before I, get, before I get going with Hannah, I just want to introduce uh, something that I've mentioned a few times in the past few weeks, 631 Worship Virtual Training. We're able to announce that the first 631 Worship Training Night is going to be on Sunday the 14th of June, starting at 7pm. We're going to do it through Zoom, so we can't do it face-to-face, -face. we can't have in-person uh, in meetings or anything like that at the moment. So we're going to go online and everyone's going to gather together through Zoom and we're going to spend the evening chatting and we're going to spend, uh, we're going to have, have a few leaders sharing their thoughts, sharing some stuff that's on their heart. We're going to keep those messages down to about 10 minutes at the most because I know uh, Zoom is very different to uh, normal uh, in-person meetings and so we don't want to wear people out but we do want to inspire you, we want to feed you, we want to sow seed into your heart. And so we've got a number of leaders that we're, we're going to get to share. And then after they've shared, we're going to get people into breakout groups so that they can gather and meet with three or four other worship team members from anywhere. You know, it's all going to be, it's all going to be randomly assigned. I, lo I love that Zoom does that. Uh, so you'll be meeting with people that you've probably never met before, some that you may have uh, recognised from previous 631 worship days or some other church events. And you're going to chat about uh, the, the messages that have been shared you're going to be uh, getting deeper into it, finding uh, ways in which you can embed and implement some of the things that we've been talking about. Uh, hi, EJ Norris 22, thanks for joining us. Uh, stick with us, we're going to be getting going with Hannah in a moment. Just say hello in the comments down below if you wouldn't mind. So, uh, and we're also going to be praying together as well. So these uh, the, uh, 631 virtual training nights uh, it's brand new, we, we, we're trying it out, but it's the way ahead, I think, it's particularly in, the, in this digital age where we are now, where everything's online and we, and we can't meet together in person now. So if you head to 631worship.com, you can book your free place. You need to get there quickly. The, the spaces have already been starting booking out uh, tonight. We opened the, the, the booking tonight and we've already started getting bookings coming in. The spaces are limited because Zoom limits their spaces. So, uh, so get, get your booking in as soon as you can and we're going to have a fantastic evening and hopefully it won't be the, fit, the only one. We're going to do these fairly regularly because one of the, the, the most important things, particularly in this time of lockdown where we're, where we're separated from people and we don't have that kind of sense of community that uh, we used to have and we're sometimes trying to get it through some of the stuff that we do online. But we want, what we want to do is keep developing people's devotional lives, keep people strong, keep people growing closer to God. And the whole point of Sixth Week on Worship is to get people more passionate 
about Jesus, more passionate about uh, everything that he is, and allowing that to feed into what we do as worship leaders and as worship team members and everything that we do in the way that we serve church, allowing that to feed into, uh, into our ministry. So check out 631worship.com. You can book your place. Uh, someone else from St. Albans, uh, you, you've got lots of friends joining uh, Hannah, which is really great. So uh, I'm not going to uh, waffle on anymore. I want to bring in Hannah because we're going to have a really good chat. Um, so bear with me a moment. Here we go. Let's bring Hannah in. Where are we? Here we go. Here we are. Hello. Hello, Hannah. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Not at all. Nice to be with you. Nice to meet yeah. you in person. <laughs> nice to meet you properly. Yes. How are you doing this evening? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Enjoying yeah. peaceful evening. Yeah. Enjoying the, enjoying the weather up in London. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. I've, I've just been out for a little walk and uh, nice. yeah, it's lovely. How is it down I, there? It's roasting down here. It's been absolutely <laughs> amazing down on the South Coast. Really good weather. Excellent. Glad to yeah, hear it. It's good. Um, I, I, don't know if, uh, I don't know if you realise, but I, I grew up in East London or South East London. Oh, um, really? I was, I was born in Woolwich and I grew up in Elton for the first 11 years of my life. Oh, um, so, yeah, so I kind of, kind of slightly consider myself a Londoner. <laughs> I think that's still fair to say. Right, anyway, so got so, it in the blood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't. You, you can take the boy out of London, but you can't take London out of the boy. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I really Thank appreciate you. it, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your story and uh, hearing the the journey that you've taken as a worship leader. Um, so, why don't you first of all, uh, before we get going, let me just say a quick hello to some more people. Hello, Zach. Zach's my son. Uh, nice <laughs> to see you, Zach. Uh, Marcos Ravello. Uh, someone else, uh, I don't know him, but it's great. Thank you for joining us. Um, just say hello in the comments down below if you can. Right, H Hannah, so first of all, let's get to know you. Um, uh, where are you from? How did you get to where you are? Uh, tell us about your church as well and about your worship team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so at the moment, I'm, uh, so I'm serving as worship and student pastor um, at St. Albans Fulham, which is a great church in yeah. West London. Uh, so I've been there about two and a half years now. Yeah. And, um, but I'm not, well, I'm originally from just outside London. Uh, okay. And, well, I suppose, yeah, I guess, so two significant events that have led me where I am. Yeah. I, uh, when I was about 11, 12, I, uh, I became a Christian and yeah. uh, I saw the film School of Rock. Uh, okay. which is not not connected I, at all. Was that, oh, okay, okay, right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was what led you. <laughs> no, no. But um, becoming a Christian probably the bigger event in my life. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I saw that film, I uh, I wanted to learn to play the electric guitar. Um, okay. Off, off the back of it because <laughs> I thought it seemed yeah. pretty cool. Um, but my older brother was learning the electric guitar at the time, and uh, he uh, he said that we couldn't learn the same instrument. So <laughs> I. I started learning the bass guitar instead. Oh, okay. I saved, saved up my pocket money and bought myself a terrible second-hand bass guitar. Yeah. Um, but that was a, a basically the same time that I became a Christian. And so there okay. was a, an amazing youth pastor at our church. He um, got me involved with worship pretty much straight away. Um, I'm, I'm sure, looking back on it, I imagine they didn't actually turn my amp on and for about a year. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, that never Yeah, well, seemingly you know. we never do that. No, 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 no never. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so he was a massive encouragement and that just kind of led me. So, yeah, basically as long as I've been a Christian, um, yeah. I've been involved with worship. Okay. Um, but mostly, mostly from an instrumental perspective, actually. Um, leading worship and particularly singing is something that I have done relatively recently. Okay. Um, actually, only, only really since coming to St. Albans. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, I came on staff at St. Albans initially as a student pastor. Um, yeah. And then there weren't loads of worship leaders around at the time. And I was like, yeah, I can, I can maybe give that a go. Um, and I guess kind of started doing a bit more, found that I actually really enjoyed it. And yeah, um, yeah eventually it has become part of my, part of my job. So um, okay. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a baby worship leader, so in some ways yeah. I feel a bit of a fraud uh, talking to you because uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I've got uh, that much experience to share. But <laughs> you've got some experience, and a any experience is good. I think there's always a story to tell, even if you've only been there for doing a month. Uh, one of the, one of the things that's come out in some of the previous conversations with a lot of the team leaders is that they they became team leader almost uh, without realizing. Mm -hmm. In the light, suddenly they're, they're in the worship team, and suddenly they turn around, and suddenly they're in charge of it. Is do you, is that similar to you in the sense that you you kind of you join the worship team, not looking to be leader or anything like that, but 
and then you turn around one day and suddenly you're you're running the whole thing yeah i mean i i never would have uh thought that this would be something i did as a job um but it's uh yeah it's a real it's a real joy um, yeah and our worship team at St Albans is fantastic they're such a great group tell me about and your team. it's a joy tell me about so your team yeah so it's about um probably 20 25 people on the team okay. um, and yeah a real mixture of ages and stages different kind of musical styles and that kind of thing um i guess as a church our, our style would be you know pretty contemporary worship yeah. but although actually i think because uh just because of the nature of our team we don't have loads of like drummers and bassists and electric guitarists yeah. so so actually the kind of feel of it often is a bit more sort of a bit more acoustic a bit more sort of okay. folky, folky vibe um which suits me to be honest that's probably yeah. my my vibe as well so, okay um, so so even though you're in london you're not uh you, you haven't been able to kind of connect with a lot because london obviously is, is a place where musicians will go to to mm -hmm. live and you know there, there's a lot of work there you haven't been able to kind of get some of those musicians into your church yet. <laughs> well i don't know i guess it's just you know well, they, they're just, just hiding it wh whoever's in your church and yeah um it's really nice to have a worship team that really reflects you know reflects our community and yeah and um, it's nice we've we're quite a sort of student studenty church there's a lot of um students from imperial college who come to our church okay so yes it's a lot of them who serve on the worship team as well yeah. which is really nice kind of overlap of the two parts of my job fantastic yeah. so okay so tell me does your team have a vision or a mission statement and if so what is it yeah well so we i guess two two answers to that we don't have a, a specific vision statement for our team we but we have a vision statement as a church yeah um so as a church our, our vision is to see a great awakening of faith in jesus transforming fulham and beyond fantastic um, which is a great vision statement yeah. um and so worship you know we really see as as part of that wider vision yeah um but as a team, actually, we did about a year ago, we set, set some time aside and thought about, I guess, more like some values that we wanted to, um, yes. to work to. So um, oh, I hope I can remember these. We've got five values. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so one is, is uh, we want people on our team to be, to be humble, um, to be committed to both to God and to each other, um, yeah. to be creative, to be uh, prophetic and to be encouraging. Um, so those are, our, those are our kind of five values. And how do, you, how do you see those values working out within your, you know, practically speaking, within your team? Yeah, I mean, we try and sort of chat about those at, at team nights and that kind of thing to yeah. really embed them. But, you know, it's culture really, isn't it? And yes. I suppose yeah. you really set culture by, by practicing it. So, yeah. I mean, for instance, I think encouragement is a huge part of any worship team. Yes. And um, to be cheering each other on, it's really easy to, for, you know, everyone to be a critic, but um, yeah. to, to really build each other up and, uh, so, so we try and do that. So after every service, we'd, we'd gather around the sound desk at the back and we'd, um, you know, we try and encourage each other and yeah. try and really call out specific things that people have done well. Oh, um, fantastic. We have this little phrase. Well, we, I really like the phrase, um, looking for the 10. So like, if you just right. think, you know, everyone's doing so many different things when they're on a, on a worship team. And chances are some of those things will be like two out of 10 and some of them will be 10 okay. out of 10. Yes. Um, but saying after the service, like looking for the thing that was 10 out of 10 yeah. um, and being like, hey, I just want to tell you that, you know, your, your strumming today was amazing or, oh, yeah, you really nailed that particular song, even if there's other stuff they could work on. Yeah. Um, but to, to name the 10, um, I think is a good, that's good fantastic. practice to have. That's, that's, that's a great little thing, team thing to do. Yeah. I love it. Fantastic. Um, so tell me, what, have been some of the biggest challenges that you face as a team leader and what have you done to overcome them? I realize you've only been a team leader for a couple of years, but and I imagine Maybe. even, yeah, I imagine even stepping into that role, there would have been some challenges, but you know, what kind of challenges have you faced and how have you overcome the ones that you've overcome? <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's the right way of saying well, it. I hope, yeah, I guess still overcoming probably. Yes. But um, yeah, I guess, I guess a big one is, maybe you could summarize it as like the the difference between pastoring and managing a team um and and holding those two things together yeah. um i guess i guess i come from a con so having been kind of doing student work for about about five years now um you know that's that's so pastoral you're so like yeah. you've got all of your attention on the person in front of you and you're just there to you know you're building them up you're, you're trying to encourage them and um you're really just just there for them um and as a worship pastor you're doing that as well yeah. but you're also you've also got a job to do because you're you know in an hour's time you've got to lead the church in worship um and you want to you want to honor the church and you want to honor god when you do that and so um so just trying to strike that balance between between caring for your team 
yeah uh, but then but then also getting the job done and and doing it to the best of your ability um and i think probably the challenge there is that for me i would say maybe swing swing between the two and so sometimes you know it's a sunday morning yeah it's an hour until until we go and you know sometimes someone turns up and actually they're having a hard time and what they yeah. really need is you to put down your guitar and say hey what's going on can we chat yeah. can we pray um but it's really easy to have your eyes fixed on the service and actually to to lose sight of that or conversely we've definitely had times where we've kind of run out of time a little bit you know you know in a band practice because we've yeah. been, you know we've just been joking and laughing around or, or just you know having a chat and um but actually you know that's not honoring like you, you do need sure. to, to get through this stuff so yeah. i think trying to strike that balance is probably um yeah definitely a, a challenge that i'm yeah. still learning how to sure. do sure and how how was it actually coming into team um to take over as, as leader? Because obviously the, I imagine the team would have, has been going before you arrived at the church and before you became the leader of the team. Yeah. How was that for you stepping into something that already existed um, where, where you as a leader, you, 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 you know, your role has changed, you, you stepped into something new. Uh, how was that for you? How did you find that? Yeah, I mean, a jury, to be honest. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a really established team. There's some people who've been serving... <clears throat> You know, our church is a church plant. It's about 10 years old. There are some people yeah. on the team who've been serving for about 10 years yeah. um, and who are really experienced. And actually, as a, as a young, relatively new worship leader, that's a joy, you know, to come, yeah. come into a team where there are those people. Um, that has its challenges too, of course, because if you, you know, if, if inevitably you want to bring some change and you want to kind of set culture, you know, sometimes that's challenging if people are really established. But actually, I found at St. Albans, people have been really gracious with me yeah. and they've allowed me to learn on the job and, you know, yeah. cut my teeth on worship leading, you know, on the job. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great, really. I just, I'm constantly thankful for our worship team. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Well, that kind of, kind of leads me on to the next question. That looking back, even, even on just on the last two years, in hindsight, is there anything that you wish you hadn't done? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's not so much things that I wish, wish I hadn't done, it's more things that I wish I hadn't um, thought. <laughs> yeah. I think um, certainly, certainly when I was a teenager and getting involved in worship, and actually, I mean, even, even still, it's really easy to make it about you, isn't it? And, and sure. I think definitely there's a, I have a sort of perfectionistic streak in me and it's really easy for me to, you know, to come off after to leading worship and to fixate on like, oh, I you know, fluffed up the yes. words on that song. Yeah. Or, oh, there's a wrong chord there and, you know, kind of, dwelling on that stuff rather than sure. rather than seeing the encouragement and um yeah i think i just if i could kind of go back to an earlier version of myself i'd probably you know just tell her to get over herself a little bit and <laughs> um and and focus on jesus because it's about jesus and yeah you know i always come back to you know there's that passage in revelation where where there's everyone surrounding the throne of jesus he's at the center and you know all the elders and the beasts and they're all surrounding and they're bowing down and they're they're singing holy 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 um at, at no point is it like one of the elders sang off key a little bit and, and everything stopped, you know, the worship <laughs> of heaven stopped at that moment. Yeah. Um, you're just, you're joining in with something so much bigger than yourself when yeah. you lead people in worship. So um, really I think I would love to, <laughs> probably still, I just need to get that into my head when I stand up to lead <laughs> worship. It's slightly unfortunate that when you lead worship, everyone's looking at you. Yes. Because that can, that can fool you into thinking that in some way it's about you, whereas... It's, it's just not even remotely, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, that's really good. That's really good. And there are, are any things, over, uh, particularly in this last couple of years, that you have done that have gone really well, some successes that you've had that you thought, yeah, that was great. I'm glad I did that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like definitely just individual services or individual moments in worship where you think, wow, you know, the spirit was at work here and, and people yeah. were engaging in worship. And, but that's, that's almost never anything that I've done. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think as a, as a leader and in t trying to sort of grow a team, I think the thing that I'm learning to prioritise more and more and goes well when I do it is, is just really making time for team. Um, yeah. and, and not actually just on a, you know, on a Sunday when you're there in band practice, because as I was saying before, you know, you've got a job to do and, and sometimes you do have to have your mind kind of fixed on yeah. that. Um, but actually, whatever, you know, whether that's meeting up with people to like jam during the week or going for a coffee with your worship team or having a, you know, a team night or even a team, a whole team day together. Um, I think that is, those are the times when the team grows and when you can 
really chat with someone. And I'm so often surprised when I, when I take time and I, and I meet up with someone on our worship team and I ask them how it's going. I'm so often surprised by what they say. And yeah. it's just every time it's an eye opener, like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on in your life, in your, you know, in your worship life, but also in your personal life. Like I, I yeah, need to have those conversations more. Yes. And so that I can, you know, help people grow and, and build them up and yeah, care for them, I guess. And how in this current sort of lockdown situation, how are you doing that? How is that? Has, has what you do changed much because of the lockdown situation? And, and is there anything that you're doing that's completely new that you, you know, to, to continue your, your, what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, yeah, everything's changed, isn't it? I imagine the same, the same for you. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, our Sunday worship looks totally different. We're, we we started off just, you know, individual people leading from from their homes, and yeah. uh, we're trying a bit more now to have a bit more of a sort of virtual band going on. Yes. Yeah. Bit of a work in progress. Um, but it's been really fun actually. I think you know, it's now's a time that really releases creativity in people, and it's been fun, yeah. um, you know, to see members of the team actually really stepping up and being like, you know, I'm I'm going to work out how to you know, how to record myself really well at home or to use some new technology or new equipment. Um, And I think it's, you know, wanting to encourage people in that and release them in that. Um, It's it's harder because you don't see people all the time. And I'm definitely trying to sort of check in with people individually as much as I can. Um, But yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to know from you as well. I mean, how, how do you support a, how do you support a worship team when you're not seeing each other? Yeah, it's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it is definitely different. And, um i originally at the start i think um i was thinking oh yeah we'll do we'll have zoom meetings you know we just discovered zoom or google hangouts at the time right like <laughs> what is this well, what's that now um, what's this zoom thing <laughs> yeah and so and i think that we were originally we were thinking yeah we could just do all that and we'll just have these hangouts and then it, we never i never did it because the, everyone else was doing zoom hangouts and it was like how many zoom hangouts really can you can people put up with <laughs> Um, so in the end, I just kind of like every now and again, I'd send them a a WhatsApp message either individually or just to the the team and just kind of check in. And, um, because the church are doing, I probably, I'd I'd imagine the same uh, with you guys as well. The church are doing stuff like that on Sundays and, uh, with connect groups and things like that. Then there's so much of that actually going on that I think, and and I think people are talking about it now is that, that zoom overload. Mm, um, yeah. where there's you know, that kind of thing. Actually, people are switching off because it's actually become, it's, it's gone way beyond the new normal. It's, it's, now, it's now actually people have become dis- desensitized to Zoom. And so, um, so yeah, so we're, we're, uh, what I'm doing certainly in the moment is uh, similar to what you're doing with your team is uh, using opportunities to develop and use people's creativity to, you know, to create virtual worship teams songs so we we did one we released one a couple of weeks ago and we're working on some new uh, stuff as well at the moment that we can use on sunday mornings as part of our service but also um something that we can put out there as a worship team for people who are not connected to the church at all to engage with and find a way of connecting with god uh in a way that they're probably not used to but it's just you know a, a, a complete worship set that has songs and scripture and a bit of prayer all flowing together mm. that people can yeah. just like uh, you know i spent 15 minutes listening to this set and i just i felt closer to god i have no idea who god is but i felt closer to him and uh, you know th- th- it's almost like added a, a a missional edge to worship that i think certainly i've been wondering how can we make worship missional because all we do is just lead worship on the sunday morning yeah. in the service and i think i'm i'm starting to realize hey here's an opportunity here if 25 percent of the population are engaging with some form of religious service at the moment although that seems to have tailed off now because i think people have like i said <laughs> become desensitized to it but there's an opportunity there to kind of make what we're doing missional rather than just serving a particular service if you see what i mean yeah. So, yeah, so we're kind of, we're learning, we're trying. We have, we have no idea what we're doing from week to week, but, you know, yeah. we, we just make it work. We just do it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I think it's definitely a time for, for reassessing. Definitely. You know, those things that maybe we once thought were so important. I definitely, you know, it's yeah. easy to get consumed with like, oh, you've got to have, yes. you know, the right band and the perfect set list and, yeah. and all of these things. And suddenly that's all stripped away. Yeah. And it's just, you know, maybe it's like on Sundays, me and my housemates have just been leading some kind of live worship um, yes. after our service. We've been having extended worship. Yeah. And, and it's like, 
it's terrible sound quality. We haven't practiced. We don't, you know, we haven't really made a plan. Yeah. But we've, we're finding that people are engaging with it and people yes. are, are telling us that they're, you know, they're encountering God at home and, and having amazing times of worship. And it's like, wow, okay. Yeah, so maybe it's, some of it's that amazing, stuff that isn't it? We've been so, con- you know, concerned yeah. with actually... Yeah. Maybe it's not that important. Maybe it's a time of kind of stripping back, I guess. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting and very exciting time. Yeah. It's, um, so my final question to you, and it's been really good uh, chatting with you, Hannah, and um, hopefully we can kind of keep in touch and uh, do this again sometime uh, yeah. in the future. But uh, my final question is, what has been, or what, uh, let me read this, what has been the best piece of advice or encouragement that someone else, another leader, has given to you um, for, for within the context of your leadership and your, and your sort of spiritual growth mm, yeah I mean that's that's hard because I've been given some great advice and I've learned from some really good leaders you mentioned uh, you mentioned Matt yes before, uh, but I, I'm very lucky to, to work yeah. with Matt I'm very grateful yeah. for him um, yeah I think probably I mean I've heard this from multiple people not a single person but when it comes to leading worship in particular I think it's this thing of you can't lead people where you're not going yourself. Yeah. Um, and actually the, the time that I spend with God, you know, in the morning or just in, <laughs> in my bedroom, just with my guitar, that's like, that's far more important than all of my, you know, set planning and all yeah. of that kind of thing. That actually, if I'm not spending time just dwelling in God's presence and, and loving him and learning to love him more then you know, it's, it's not really worth it. And, and sure. I can't really, I can't, claim to stand up on a Sunday and, and lead people in worship if actually I'm not being led by God and I'm not, you know, really just humbling myself before yeah. him. Um, and so I think, yeah, that's the advice I've received and that I would give to any, anyone else in any kind of leadership, yeah. to be honest. It's just, yeah. are, you, are you like attending, are you attending to your own relationship with God before you claim to lead anyone else? Yeah. And, and if not, then maybe, maybe you need to reassess things a little bit. Yeah. Um, I find that, the, the, you know, the better my walk with God, the closer I am with him, um, the, be- the better a leader I become. That's fantastic. That's really good advice. That's really good advice. Thank you so much, Anna, for, uh, for giving up your time and, and chatting with me tonight. It's been really good. And, oh, I, and, I'm, and I know like, uh, Becca has, has mentioned that it's been uh, also good, really helpful insight. Thanks so much. So thank you, Becca, for watching. And a few other people have just joined us last minute. So they've caught the tail end of it. Um, just so you guys know who just, who just joined us, you can catch up with this conversation on YouTube. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash matlockwood73, uh, all of these conversations, this one and the previous week conversations, they're all up on there. Um, and there's some really good, really good conversations we've been having. Uh, and, I, and I love this, that, that, that I'm getting to meet. Um, you should know that I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert and I... Uh, if you put me in a room uh, that you were in a room with as well and other people, I probably wouldn't talk to you. I would probably just stand uh, <laughs> on the edge and wait for someone to come up and try and start a conversation with me before I actually start talking. Whereas doing it this way is great because uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm chatting and talking and I'm, uh, and, and I'm hearing other people's stories and I don't feel in any way vulnerable at all, which is <laughs> great. <laughs> it's good well I'll tell you what if you were on the edge of the room hiding from people i'd probably meet you there so yeah. <laughs> you'd be the same it's good that we can talk like this right? exactly yeah this is perfect for introverts i love it <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so uh, youtube.com slash matt with 73 you can catch up with this conversation and all the other previous conversations plus there's a few other things on there as well uh, thank you so much for joining me hannah really appreciate your time oh, and absolute pleasure. All, thank you all the best to your team, especially as, you, as you're coming through this transition period as we're trying to gear up towards going back into in-person meetings, whatever that looks like in the future. Who knows what it's going to look like. But, um, and say hi to Matt from me. Um, oh, I absolutely will. And it, yeah, he's, he's, he's a real inspiration. Uh, real inspiration. I, I, lo- I love watching his shows as well. And it's kind of like I, I got the idea for doing this from him. <laughs> so it's um, so uh, all credit to him. He is. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Um, uh, his podcast is really good as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to promote Matt Hogg's ministry here. Sound a bit like that. Sound a little bit like that. Anyway, thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate, really appreciate your time. And um, all the very best. Ah, all the best to you as well. What a, what a pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye. I'll see you soon. All right. Well, that was, that was Hannah Blythe. And I hope you got loads of stuff out of that. There was some really good... 
uh, really good uh, team stuff there from Hannah. And like I said, yeah, you can catch up with all these conversations on YouTube or my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, it will be on uh, my stories and in my, on IGTV as well. It's all in there. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hi, Christina. Lovely to see you. I hope you and, uh, and Carlos are doing well. Um, uh, so next week, I am going to be talking with Richard Butt, who is the worship pastor at King's Church in Eastbourne. Um, is, I'm looking forward to this. I think, uh, I think uh, King's Church is quite a large church on the south coast there in Eastbourne. So uh, again, another, another different kind of dynamic uh, uh, hearing from Richard there. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for joining me tonight. And I will see you back here next Monday at eight o'clock. I am looking to move these to a Tuesday night in the not too distant future. Keep an eye out for that. But for the moment, they're going to be Monday nights at eight o'clock. Join me again next week. Thank you so much for joining me uh, and I'll see you soon.